Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris. Um, now you might notice that this is not where we left off in the last episode. Unfortunately I have lost some footage. Um, my game crashed and uh, my computer was had an issue. I, I think the power went out for a moment or something. Um, in any case I had to pick up at an auto save where we left off. Um, so it's 2428. Uh, I think we ended the last episode at 2422 I think. Anyways, um, not much happened. Um, we looked to the economy on our planets. We upgraded a lot of buildings, especially our alloy foundries and our research labs to just up our alloy production and our research production, which are the two most important um, resources at this point of the game. In the L cluster, um, we have uh, moved our fleets into the Lessim, um, and hopefully we're gonna, yeah, we're building a star base here. I think we're gonna move our fleets next into the Galamun and take that system and um, if the Grey Tempest has not taken Wegmore and Hagawa for us yet, we're just going to go ahead and crush them. Because I don't know how much longer it is going to be until the end game crisis. But we should probably just deal with this uh, threat as soon as possible and neutralize it. So we can put our full attention to the end game crisis when it happens. Um, uh, in other news, the state of Panixala crushed their rebellion. Or they're soon to crush their rebellion, I guess. They haven't ended the war, but we moved our fleets in. Um, and we dealt with the rebellion for them. We conquered out all their systems back for them. Um, the last thing they need to do is just get off their butts and move their armies to conquer some planets. I guess we could use our army to help them. Um, I guess, okay, we'll just bite the bullet and do it. We'll merge our armies and uh, we'll move into Fear Mathrios and probably take the system for them. Land armies, okay. Research complete, we can exploit Zero. Okay, fantastic. Let's see what our new options are. We can create a resort world. Industrial subsidies, forge subsidies. Oh, this is actually a really good edict for us. I want this edict, forge subsidies. It's gonna increase our alloy productions by uh, decreasing our energy output. I think that's a good trade-off. Um, looks like we are running low on energy credits though. So that is something to be wary of. Um, another thing that happened that I realized um, in the lost footage is there's this new state of Holdabana. I think they declared independence from the state of Panixala. Um, I don't know when this happened, and I don't know if it happened in the last episode and we just were completely unaware of it. But uh, all of these systems now belong to an independent third party empire, so we're probably going to want to, if we can afford the resources and the time, Conquer that land back for the state of Panixala. Um, but all in due time, we have more pressing matters at the moment. Um, we're moving our fleet to repair a terminal egress. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and try to take the rest of this L cluster as quickly as we can. Okay. Um, meanwhile, how are our other worlds doing? Not bad. We could probably build some more jobs in the way of research labs. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't hurt to get an energy grid either. Construction complete. It's a really small amount of energy, but uh, it's uh, it might still be worth worth it. Oh, it looks like our energy. Income went back up to 1k. Okay, so it was at 400, but now it's at 1k. I don't know what's going on, but if it's at 1k, I'm not too concerned about energy anymore. 1,000 energy a month is plenty. Let's go ahead and sell some of our extra resources and uh, reinforce one of our fleets. We'll go ahead and wait for the month to take over so we can sell some of these. Now let's see how many alloys we can buy in. Not that many alloys. We'll take our weakest fleet, which is, I'm proud to say, 83,000. Okay, we're getting our fleets back up there to be competitive. Um, and once we're fully up, uh, fully repaired, I should say, we're going to move into the Galliman system. Um, we're going to have our construction ship follow close behind and get ready to build a star base in the Galliman system as soon as we conquer it. Planetary invasion begun. Alright. Looks like we are doing the dirty work for the state of Panixala who can't get off their butt and do this themselves. 
That's okay. Our psionic pops are pretty powerful. Our psionic troops are pretty powerful, I should say. Did we take any casualties? We had 20 of them. Okay, we, we ended up with 20 of them. Okay, good. I think there's another, yep, there's another planet here. So we're gonna go ahead and conquer that planet for them as well. Seems like we have to do everything around here. For Fion, we can upgrade the capital building complex. Okay. Now that we moved our fleets in, let's go ahead and move our construction ship close behind. Fleet destroyed. Wait, fleet destroyed? What fleet? We still have four fleets there. We still have our construction ship. Construction ship. We have our two science ships. Do we have our MSI warship? We do. Enemy End of the Leertian Compact. Do we still have our army? We do have our army. Okay, it looks like that was the end of the Civil War. So now that the Civil War is over, we can go ahead and send our army back into the heart of our empire, probably in Huawei. Um, and we can gift these systems back to the state of Panixala because we don't want to govern them ourselves. Former research agreement, sure. Offer trade deals, let's transfer systems. Chiselion and Zandabon, yes, take them. Come on, say to Panic Zala, accept. Share are taking their sweet time to review our offer. Our very generous offer, I should say. Um, Fear Mathrios, yes, and Xeris, yes. And hopefully that should be things restored to as they should be. Okay, fantastic. Um, and actually, once we've secured the L-Gate system, we can probably gift away the XC-81 Singularity as well. Um, no, long, no longer do we have a need to hold that if we're just defending terminal egress directly. Um, we need to go ahead and build a, mine, a star base here, and we're going to move our fleet to repair and terminal egress before we move forward and uh, start conquering the rest of the L-Cluster. Like I said, I want to deal with this swiftly. Hopefully before the end game crisis uh, comes along. So I think our next target is going to be Lin Tiger. Um, and then we can probably take Beskel real quickly. I think Jen is their home system. So I want to save this one for last because we're going to need to muster all of our strength for that. Which means selling more minerals, selling more food, selling more consumer goods and buying more alloys. We're gonna find our weakest link. Somehow it's 64,000, I don't know what happened there. I guess we took high, heavy casualties in that battle for Galamun. I guess it's worth it though. I mean, we had to, we have to take these casualties. They're inevitable. Okay, construction complete in this system. Let's go ahead and build our research stations. Let's move this construction ship back into terminal egress so it doesn't get like taken by a surprise invasion. Ah, and we can unlock the edict for forge subsidies. I think we're going to take that edict straight away. Um, let's see what our options are. Faction resource output. Faction just give us unity. We don't really need unity, as far as I'm aware at least. You guys let me know if we do. Habitability, oh, I think all our planets are Gaia worlds or relic worlds. I think we're doing fine on the habitability front. Reverse engineer minor artifacts. No, I'd rather just keep our minor artifacts so that we can spend them on our fleets. Maybe claim influence costs and war exhaustion gain. I don't know. I guess that's the best of those available options. Okay, once our fleets are fully repaired, into Lin Tigger we go. All of our fleets should be set to take points. They are. All right, hundred, 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 hundred. Okay, we're gonna move in. We're actually going to leave our construction ship here, so we're ready to take the system as soon as we finish conquering it. Research complete. 
Alright, let's see. We finished the Particle Lance. This is a new X-Slot weapon. Exciting stuff. We could exploit Dark Matter finally. We can get a Planetary Shield Generator. What does this do? Planetary Build Speed. Standard Construction Template. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Orbital Bombardment Damage. Okay. Unless we expect to get bombarded, which I'm really hoping we can avoid at all costs. Let's not take that. Let's see what Dark Matter does for us. Let's see what this... What new technologies this allows us to unlock once we can start exploiting dark matter. <coughs> Excuse me. Council agenda ready. All right, we can take our new council agenda. That's going to give us pop happiness and let's see what else our options are. Why don't we take psionic supremacy? I like this one. It increases our resources from psionic pops, which is all of our pops, basically. Okay. Okay. And our fleet is going in to conquer Lin Tiger. Um, just to make sure that uh, we have all of our alloy, or all of our allies following close behind. Let's go ahead and park here so we can wait for them to catch up. And, um, yeah, let's move in. Hostile fleet engaged. Okay. See how this battle goes. I think we're going to take the brunt of the casualties here because our allied fleets are hanging back while we're, we're at the front of it. That's okay. These are casualties that we have to take. We ha just have to bite the bullet and get this done. Finish the L-Gate. It's 2430, so we're well into the time when the endgame crisis is viable. I guess any of these years, it could happen. Um, the Tempest Shoal has moved two fleets in to attack us. Construction so now they decide to be mobile and start attacking us. We could have just waited for them to attack Wegmore. But no. They wanted to do this now. Okay, let's move our construction ship in and build a starbase here. I don't even want to look. Oh. This is so hard to look at. We finally got our fleets up to like over 100k. We lost three destroyers, 13 corvettes, one cruiser, four battleships. And that's just one of our four fleets. Two battleships lost. One cruiser, one battleship. Oh, this is bad. There's so many alloys. Just when we think we're getting ahead. All right. We're going to remain parked here. Uh, no, let's move back. We need to repair, like, immediately. Just in case they decide to come at us again. We need to be prepared. That was... That was a costly victory, for sure. I think I'm okay with uh, splitting the L, the L cluster with the state of Mythfell for now. There's nothing we can do about it. Man, that really has me disappointed. So many alloys. Oh, man. Our fleets are pretty weak now. We have 250, 56, 61. Okay, we're gonna have to go ahead and reinforce this fleet. Do I have rare resources I could be selling as well? Construction complete. I do. I could probably sell a whole bunch of these. And a whole bunch of these. And a whole bunch of these. Okay. We have more alloys than we know what to do with. Okay, we have 15,000 alloys. Let's spend them well. On our Martano Starfleet. Yes, this is the one that needs it most. Okay. We're gonna rest and repair a little bit. 
in this system we need to build a starport immediately and actually since we're above our starbase capacity i'm going to go ahead and gift our xc 81s no i don't want to do that actually this says dark matter and i'd prefer to keep my dark matter we're researching how to exploit it soon and that might be our only dark matter yeah i don't see any other dark matter anywhere else so whatever it's good for we want to keep it Okay, no, we have it in the Zorakan black hole system as well. But yeah, dark matter is hard to come by, so we're going to keep that system. Seems like it has strategic importance. Okay. How are we doing here? I don't think we have what it takes to go into this system. I really don't. There are a lot of hostile fleets in this system, and we can't possibly hope to take them all. We unlock Titans. Maybe we need to build a Titan before we go in there. Mega Engineering. Wait, this is exactly what we want. Nanite Transmuter. This is... Let's see what it does. It produces... Okay, it produces rare resources for us using Nanites. Believe me, I'm tempted, but I'm more tempted by mega engineering. This will let us build mega engineering projects, mega structures. We have to take this. There are some really good mega structures, and I've never built a mega structure before. Maybe we'll build a ring world. I think that's a fun one to build. We're starting to have a lot of population we don't know what to do with. That could be something productive to build, so we can have all of our new unemployed pops moving towards... Uh, moving to a new planet. We can focus it on alloy production and research. Our two main needs. Or I think there's a mega mega structure that produced like a Dyson Sphere, I think it is. That gives us a huge amount of energy. So if we start running low on energy, maybe that'll be worth it. Whatever we choose, it'll definitely be worth it. I don't know if there's a, a limit on the number of mega structures you can have. Can we build a um, ring world Space -born life -form and have one of those? Okay, let's continue upgrading this starport. And now that it's a official star base, let's move our fleets into there so they can rest and repair here. Treat this as their new home base. Um, yes, we'll probably copy the the buildings we have in terminal egress in this system. Okay. Can I purchase more alloys? I can. Which fleet should I pour those alloys into? Um, probably this fleet. All right. We definitely don't have what it takes to take uh, Jen. I guess all we can hope for is that um, the endgame crisis doesn't come kick our butt while we're dealing with this Algate crisis. What's it take to build a Titan? If I go into ship designer, can I create a new design for a Titan? I've never built a Titan before. Okay, I'm very excited. We need to make sure we have all the maximum options. What are our Titan combat computers? We can get carrier or artillery. Carrier is so boring. We're going to take artillery. Titan bow. So this is what a T-slot weapon is. We upgrade. Okay, so we don't have any options. They're just basically all large weapons and a T-slot weapon. A perdition beam. What does this do? Ugh. Okay, let's see. It does bonus to armor and hull. Okay, so it's basically a giant laser beam. It has a firing arc, so it looks like an X-slot weapon. It does a huge amount of damage. Um, and does it have a cooldown? Yeah, 25 days. 25.5 days. Okay, uh, how does this compare to the ancient rum rumination glare? Cooldown, 14.5 days. So this one has a much smaller cooldown. It looks like it has the same damage, 5,000 to 10,000. 
Um, does this count as an Archaeotech weapon as well? It might. It says it's an Ancient Rumination Glare. It might be. Um, let's see. Accuracy 85%. Accuracy 85%. Tracking 0, 0. Range 0 to 125 degrees. Okay, so this has a much smaller range, but we're... But we get the added bonus of having a smaller firing arc. Oh no, a smaller range, not a smaller firing arc. Smaller range, but much less cooldown. This does 439.65 damage per day. Yeah, it's almost like double the damage. So do we want to keep this Titan in at closer range? I don't actually think that's worth it. I'd rather take the lower, the lower damage output, but keep it at range because we don't want our Titan getting destroyed. So this has a range of 250. So what else can we put on here that's going to keep it at a range of 250? 150. 40. This has a range of 210. 186. 80. Oh no, this has a range of 80. This has a range of 100. I think I was looking at the wrong thing. 150. 40. 80. Wow, these all have really tiny ranges. Hmm. Really? So this is our, our longest range weapon. So I guess we put a bunch of these on. Macro batteries though, they're kind of useless. Because these are really good against shield but not against armor. Okay, we're gonna try this out. It might not be the most effective use of our um, Titan, but I think we're gonna at least give it a shot. Okay, we're gonna give this a lot of Ancient Pulse Armor. This is gonna give us a whole bunch of armor and shields. Uh, and then in addition to that, we can put on some Neutronium Armor and some extra Hyper Shields. Fantastic. Here we can include Auxiliary fire control i think this is going to be the best thing to put just to increase our chance to hit with this weapon that's really important right we only get to fire it once every 25 days we want to make sure it hits okay this is our titan class titan do we want to include some energy weapons okay i think we should include some ancient cavitation collapses as well okay i'm liking this better already Okay, we're going to give it the Artillery Combat, and then what is this? Shield Aura. Offensive Aura. Effect on hostile ships. Shield points minus 20%. Yeah, that renders these even less useful. Okay, fantastic. Titan Class Titan. What does the Auto Titan look like? Very similar to what we had built. Very similar to what we had built. Okay, let's destroy the auto-produced Titan. Okay, and let's see, how much does it take to build a Titan? If I go into one of my shipyards, let's go into Corolla, shipyard. 3,000 alloys for one ship? That's actually not bad. I was expecting it to be worse. 3,000 alloys is pretty manageable. Are we limited? Can we have more than one Titan? Alien Federation formed. So if I go into my fleet management, 210 out of 220, can I add a ship? Let's say I reduce the number of Corvettes. How much do I need to reduce the number of Corvettes to be able to add one? Okay, apparently not that much. Okay, so we can still have 36 Corvettes if we add a Titan. Okay. I think it's worth adding a Titan into every fleet. So we want 36 Corvettes and we want to add a ship, add a Titan. Oh, I cannot wait to see these in action. Okay, we want to lower this down to 36, add a ship, add a Titan. Okay, this one we'll have to wait for the Corvettes to take casualties. I'm not wasting any ships, so I'm not going to disband those Corvettes or anything like that. 
we cannot afford to waste any alloys here. Okay, what is our weakest fleet? It is probably... Yes, the Cardana Starfleet. We're gonna spend... Council agenda available. Our 5-ish thousand alloys to reinforce that fleet. And one of our science ships needs an upgrade. Let's go ahead and give it the... Guess we don't need to do anything with these science ships anymore. So let's just go ahead and give them a governor bonus so that when we eventually disband this science ship and we can assign them as governors. Okay. I need all of these fleets to be at full strength and fully upgraded before we can even consider moving in against the gen system. Um, so I'm actually considering I actually think I'd, I, I'm going to let reinforcing take preference over um, upgrading because we can always upgrade later. Okay. Everything is going off to a good start. I don't know where the end game crisis is. It's already 2433. That's 33 years after we set the end game date. I feel like we should have the crisis here, but at this point I'm not complaining. We kind of need a little bit more time to prepare. Um, until we get this L gate sorted out, we're going to be kind of vulnerable from, from this side. Okay, we're going to continue upgrading this star system, uh, this star base in Lean Tigger. Okay, fantastic. More alloys, please. Getting impatient. Maybe I should turn on to fast speed. Okay, we have a lot of allied fleets here. Should we do it? We have all of our allied fleets here. Okay, this could be a mistake. This could be a mistake. Let's move in. We have four fleets plus. We have 16,000, 5,000, 10,000, 33,000, 31,000, 20,000, 25,000. Maybe I'm overestimating the power of our allied fleets. If I add them up, they really just, they're probably a, what, 1K, uh, 100K fleet combined? Maybe a little more than 100K? We shouldn't do this. We really shouldn't. Not until we're fully upgraded. We're going to take way too high casualties. It's just not going to be worth it when we could just wait, wait and do this later. Construction complete. Okay. Why does it say following with gentle hand? I don't want to follow with gentle hand. I want to enter the orbit of the star base. Oh my gosh, our fleets are getting out of control. Okay, this is our Commissary General. Why don't we give Empire Effects a Counselor Ships Weapons Damage plus 2% and sub Sublight Speed plus 10%? That's really good. Okay, we can sell 5,000 more consumer goods, we can sell 5,000 food, and we can buy in more alloys, yes please, 13k. Okay, what's our weakest fleet? This is our weakest fleet. Let's go ahead and reinforce. Okay, one of our fleets is actually up to 131.1k. I don't know how this happened. Is this it? The 131.1k, yeah. Deck collectors, still. Spaceport under attack. Do they have an L gate? We could probably pop through the L gate now that we have one. They don't have an L gate. They do have an L gate. We could pop through an L gate and just destroy MSI at any time. In fact, that's on our, that's on my bucket list of things to do. MSI, Jesus Christ. This is ridiculous. OK, 
Okay. More upgrades? We'll wait to get uh, 10,000 of these to sell. We'll wait for the price of alloys to go down. Actually, 11,000 is a pretty good price. We'll take it while we can. Okay, the Vassog embraces cybernetics. Fantastic. We got lower war exhaustion. Maybe that'll be useful. We could increase our fleet command limit. Let's do this. Bigger and better fleets. Yes. Yes, please. Okay. Um, we can probably... No, the price of alloys is way too high. But we can probably spend our 8,000 alloys to reinforce... Wow, our fleets are actually looking in great shape right now. I'm really happy with the way things are looking right now. Okay, we can exploit dark matter. I'm interested what this is going to unlock for us in terms of future technologies. But, what is this? An improved version of our arc emitter? Yes, please. Focused arc emitter. That's, that's going to be really great. We can build new buildings on this world. Hmm... Let's build an ancient refinery. Might as well get some rare resources. We have the uh, we have the housing to support more jobs. Okay. Once we get them all over a hundred k, we might be ready for this because their fleets are only one hundred and seventeen thousand fleet power. Okay. Maybe I'm being impatient. Maybe I really should just wait till I have all of them fully upgraded. I think this is going to be trivial once all of our fleets are fully upgraded, plus we have access to our allies. Though our allies are moving away. Allies, don't move away. I swear. We're going to see some action sometime soon. Might not be right away. Iron Age. Zatar 2 had finally entered the Iron Age. Good for them. I love how it seems like those... Societies are progressing at a snail's pace in this game because it takes us like several hours to like really fully See the fruition of these empires, but in reality, it's only been Yeah, it's only been 235 years since we started they've progressed from like the Neolithic age to the Iron Age in 200 years um, But that's one of those uh, gameplay decisions that developers have to make right they need to kind of balance between interests of other keeping the game playable and enjoyable versus reality, right? They need to find a balance between those. And I, I'm, I'm happy with the balance they found. Okay. Which one is our weakest uh, fleet now? It's probably the Decini fleet. Uh, we don't have enough uh, alloys to do anything substantial. Now we do. In fact, the unbidden, a massive tear in the fabric of space itself has appeared in the Depre system. We aren't certain what caused it, but the tear acts as some kind of one-way portal from another dimension. Fleets of strange vessels are pouring out and attacking everything in sight. This looks like the beginning of a major invasion. A one-way portal from another dimension. The Dupre system, please tell me that's not close by. We have intercepted a powerful signal being sent from arriving vessels from somewhere on the other side of the portal. It sounds like a hunting call. Okay, here's the Dupre system. A hunting call? Is this the portal to another dimension? Certainly looks like it. That looks spectacular. Are these the ships that are coming out of the portal? They look like ghost ships. That's super- 432,000? Oh boy. Just when you think you're ready for something, like the end game crisis. I thought the Great Tempest was hard with their 115,000 fleets. If this is just one of their fleets, 432,000? I don't know if we're going to do this. We might die, guys. Brief all fleet commanders. Okay, I need to know where the Depray system is, though. Is it far away? No, it's not. It's in the middle of our, our vassal state. 
I'm so stressed. Brief all fleet commanders. Begins the unbidden event chain. Point of interest? The dimensional anchors. Situation log updated. Interceptor transmission. Feeding ground reached. Prey bountiful. At long last we shall feast. They're planning on eating us? This is what they look like? Man, this other dimension is whack. What are these things? Oh my gosh. I'm thinking of ending this episode a little early. I need some advice from you guys in the comments, okay? This is a this is a plea for help, okay? I've got the home system of the L cluster, okay? And I know they're going to keep throwing fleets at us until we destroy this home system. But they've got a lot of fleets in there. I don't know if we can take them with our measly four fleets plus our allies, which are also pretty measly. But at the same time, if I abandon this, the Great Tempest might get out of control. Is Which situation is more pressing? Should we let them kind of run rampant in the Sandrine United Planet States while we wait and deal with the L Cluster and then move down to defend them? Or should we move immediately to respond to this? I mean, if one of their fleets is 432,000, how many of these fleets are they going to have? Like, if this is just one of their fleets, we might be kind of screwed. Um, I know which defense we need to build. We need to build the Citadel here right away. This is only 36.5 thousand. We might need to build some uh, defense platforms as well. But that's a lot of alloys, and if I'm sending alloys here, then I'm not spending alloys on reinforcing my fleet. So, I need advice from you guys, please. If you're watching and you have beat the endgame crisis before, please let me know what you think I should do here. Should I remain in the L cluster and sort this situation out first and then respond to this? In which case, they might have conquered most of the Sandra United Planet States. So do we rush to their defense? All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm stressed, and I'll see you next time.